Hello, happy Monday everybody. Um, I am very tired. I spent yesterday at our first cat show for Cats United for the year and I was the um, I was helping to run the show. I was hosting the judges and I was actually judging myself at the show as well as exhibiting some of my cats. So I've woken up this morning very stiff and sore, let me tell you, and in need of lots of coffee, which I'm having right now. But I wanted to come on, and I've, I've, you might have seen the topic for this, you wanted to come on and tell you something else that happened yesterday. Um, and what I wanted to talk about was that some of the worst, some of the most rewarding parts of breeding are the worst parts of breeding. And any established breeders who are listening to this, hi Charlotte, anyone listening to this, Charlotte will know this, it, it's so true. Some of the worst parts of the things that will happen to you while you're breeding are going to be the things that you will later on look back on and you'll think that they're the most rewarding. And last night I got a message. I got a message during the show and I didn't actually read it. Um, I just thought, oh yeah, that's going to be a cute photo from one of my owners. And when I got home, I got a phone call and it was the same owner and he'd actually found my number, which we'd talked before, um, and gave me a call. And he said, did you see my message? And I was like, no, I've been at the show all day. And he said, Carlisle's really sick. And Carlisle is a black British short hair and he lives with Clay. And Clay has three cats from me. He has two older girls and he has Carlisle. The older girls are about 16 now and um, Carlisle's 12. So he's had cats. He, he got the cats from me years and years ago. And he still... Um, stays in contact and sends me photos and asks me for help and things with them. But poor Carlisle. Carlisle's in hospital at the moment. Carlisle is very, very sick. And he's 12 years old and the vets suspect that he's got FIP, which is crazy because it doesn't really happen with cats that age. Um, what we now think might have happened is he's sick in another way and that's tipped him over into FIP. So Carl, uh, Clay was ringing me. He's asking me questions, what to do to talk to the vets. He's got the cat at the emergency vets. He's worried. Um, I said, ask them if they could do this, tell them his father did that. His father passed away from pancreatitis. Could that be, a, could that be something? Because the symptoms sound the same. He's waiting for test results, um, all of these things. And what I'm really happy about is that he actually has insurance as well. So he's always had the insurance for his cats. And um, when we now have treatments for FIP, that's a really important thing. But the treatment for the FIP is going to be $5,500 just to get started. So it has started, they've started the treatment, but now we're looking at what else is happening. And so I've had a phone call from him, from him last night, a couple of text messages this morning. I've spoken to him on the phone twice today. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know whether or not um, there's going to be an option to treat Carlisle or not. I'm really hoping there is, but I'm not sure whether there will be or won't be. But what I wanted to tell you about is how this is really bad. This is this is awful and it's making me feel really sad to think that Clay is going to possibly lose his cat that he adores. Um, but it's also amazing to me that after all of these years, the only thing I did was my cat gave birth to his cat. Um, after all these years, he's still someone that, even though he's in Sydney and I'm in Perth, when he has a problem with his cats, he contacts me and he asks me for help. And it's not just help, it's like emotional support as well because I understand and I'm always going to be supportive in that way and we talked about some really serious things we talked about the fact that when you have cats um, we keep them alive a lot longer than their bodies are meant to be kept alive and we do things to them at the end to, to prolong their life and that sometimes that's not necessarily in the best interest of the cat sometimes we're doing that for ourselves so we have had a big deep conversation about that in the past as well because Carlisle had, Carlisle's been a bit of a lemon cat. He's had quite a few things over the years that he's had, need to have done, which is why the insurance has been amazing. Um, but we've had that chat before about, you know, at what point am I gonna need to know that it's time to say goodbye? And it's probably going to be if he does have the pancreatitis, which I suspect he does, you know, he might already be past the point of no return on that. So there's no point treating the FIP if you don't treat the pancreatitis and questions like that and things like that. This is what we're talking about. We don't have the diagnosis yet, but we're going through those options in our mind and talking about them because it's helping to prepare him for possibilities. But Carlisle, Carlisle is a special cat. Uh, a few years ago now, Clay rang me and it was almost in exactly the same situation. Carlisle wasn't walking. Carlisle was paralyzed in his back legs and he was slowly getting weaker and weaker until he couldn't get to the litter tray anymore and Clay had to help him into the litter tray. 
and the vets um, he took them to t said that the cat had this, that and the other and they gave him, I think they gave him an MRI and they wanted to give him a CT scan and a this and a that and the bill was about $6,000 at that point. Um, and he wasn't getting better, he wasn't getting better. Um, there was talk that he had lymphoma and that they'd have to start chemotherapy and things like that. And so um, he talked to me about it and I asked on one of the breeding groups that I'm on and I asked some, all my friends, has anybody had this happen before and what was it? Because we don't have a diagnosis yet. And someone said um, it's, it could be a spinal infection. Give him antibiotics. So I, I told Clay that. I said, tell your vets to give him antibiotics. And he said, they won't. They won't do it. They want to do all these tests. They want to do, they want to send him off to a specialist for more tests. I said, but they can give him the antibiotics at the same time. It won't hurt him to have the antibiotics, but it might solve the problem. And he told them that, and that still didn't happen. And I told him, Clay, he's your cat. You get to choose his care. Um, if you're not happy with his care, you can take him to another vet. So he wanted, he contacted them and said he wanted to take Clay to another vet, take um, Carlisle to another vet. And they said, no, we, we don't recommend that. The cat needs to stay here. I said, Clay, you go in there and you take your cat. He's your cat. You take him to another vet and you say, I want him to have Clavillox tablets for, the, for that. So he did. He went and he got quite firm with them and he took his cat back, took him to another local vet. He was at one of the big hospitals there. I took him to the local vet. And um, the local vet said, oh, it could be this, it could be that, it could be everything else, and almost started on the same path. And he said, no, I really want this cat just to have antibiotics, just because I think that might be the problem. And can we give him the antibiotics? I promise we'll still do all the testing, but can we give him the antibiotics? And the vet gave in and said yes. And Carlo was walking again in three days. He was fine. He's fine. He, he's lived since then. That was a, quite a few years ago now, and he's fine. No lymphoma, no need for an MRI, no need for a CT scan, um, no need for that 6,000. I think the bill came in at like a lot more than five grand. Thank God for insurance. But um, sometimes you need somebody else to be helping you because you're emotional about the cats and, and you, you're emotional because you're so attached to them and you want to throw everything at the problem. And sometimes it'll come down to being the breeder, being the person that says, hey, no. This is what we need to think about. These are the um, emotions that, you know, we need to counteract. You need to remember that you're doing this. Who are you doing this for? So, and giving them advice about things you know that you've learned as you've been a breeder. Now, this is all, in, all stuff that I've learned the longer that I've been breeding. I've learned all this information. Um, and that's why, you know, for the people that are in my new cat breeders club, that information, I'm happy to pass that on to you. You guys have got information to pass on to each other as well. I can see some of my members' names popping up. Hi, Maggie. Um, and um, I really love the fact that by taking the information that I've learned over the years and giving that to you, you are going to be able to give that to the people that have kittens from you. And maybe it might be in 12 years' time, like it has been with Carlisle, maybe in 12 years' time from today, you will be helping one of your owners with one of their cats and dealing with a problem like that and helping them um, get through it. So last time I helped him, it was a miracle. It was an absolute miracle. This cat could not walk. This cat was in um, hospital. It was about to be sent off for testing. It was about to start cancer treatment. Um, and all it took was a 30, I think it was like a $30 packet of antibiotics and he was cured. Now that's, that's, a miracle and I don't expect that to ever happen again with anything I'm doing that I'm gonna have you know I don't expect that with my cats or any cats that I've bred to have that sort of instant miracle moment again and I don't think we're gonna have that instant miracle moment this time with Carlisle but he got so many more years um, with his cat because other vets you know other people might have been straight to well um, I can't afford that treatment or the cat's not getting better and he may have been you know put to sleep at that stage he may have been euthanized at that stage but he's had years more time with his owner who absolutely adores him because I was still there for him and that he could reach out to me. And so as, as someone bringing cats and kittens into this world, you need to always remember that there's a responsibility to them, not just now, it's, it's into the future as well. And even if you stop breeding, you're still gonna have cats that are out there that you've bred that you still have a connection with. And I absolutely, absolutely love that connection. I love the fact that two days ago I got photos from um, a lady that owns a cat of mine called Tic Tac. Um, he's a beautiful van cat. He's a white with little, two little patches on his head, which is why she called him Tic Tac, because they look like Tic Tacs when he was a kitten. And she sent me a picture of him and saying like how he's um, 
look at this cat, look at his face. He's, he's such a, um, I think she calls, she calls him a butthead and he is, he's, he's that kind of cat. And he's, she, she, she um, just absolutely loves the hell out of this cat. And I love seeing photos of him. And um, these are people, I actually met her when she came, they were in Singapore and he went to Singapore and lived with them in Singapore. But I met them when they came to Perth and now they're in Sydney. And that was a few years ago too. I'm still getting photos of cats that I bred from years and years and years ago. I'm getting photos of ones I bred last year. You know, I love seeing them. I love the connection I have with the owners. And I find that that's a really, really rewarding part of this hobby. So if this hobby is about, you know, people that think this hobby is about cute kittens and, and um, having lots of cats around you, it's really about poop trays. Um, but aside from all of those things, it's about the connections you're going to make with the people that get your cats. And I hope that you are going to be the kind of breeder that is going to nurture those connections and um, really um, hold them as important as I do because that's where it gets rewarding. So like I said, some of the worst times, and this is one of the worst times and I'm you know, I'm not holding out much hope for this cat. He's a beautiful big black boy. He's had problems in his lifetime. Um, before he had the paralysis, he actually had entropion. So entropion is something that a lot of breeders don't talk about. It's a show fault. So they don't talk about it when their cats have had it. It's like hep secret. But I'm, I have no problem sharing things like this. Entropion is where, I'm just trying to show you, where your cat's eye gets weak here. The it rolls up like that and the un inner the eyel eyelashes will roll into the eye. And so then the cat gets the eye like this and it becomes infected and they can get ulcers. And um, this particular cat, um, his father had it and we had surgery on his father. We don't know whether his father got the entropians from his face shape or whether it was from him um, having herpes virus. Again, another thing breeders don't talk about. But for whatever reason, Ricky, especially being a stud cat with big jowls, his cheeks did push up and push that you know, eye in. And Ricky had surgery on his eyes. And then Carlisle had a very similar face shape to his dad. And he ended up having to have entropian surgery as well. So he had to have entropian surgery on um, both eyes twice because the first um, surgery didn't correct it. And that was something again, where he rang me up to talk about that. And breeders who um, see entropian as like a horrible thing that is really awful and you know you shouldn't talk you know it's like a show fault and it's shameful well they miss out on the fact that, that you know if a person rings them up and says their cat has entropion they'll be like no that's not for me that's not my fault I don't want to talk about it I'm happy to talk about it it's yes it's come from I bred that cat I can't control the fact that that cat's face came out in the shape that it did it you know like I can control some things I can't control everything but I can give you support when it happens and again this cat was in Sydney and I'm in Perth the other side of Australia but I found him a vet that could do the surgery for him um, and I found him uh, a vet that understood how to do the surgery because not all vets have done it they haven't needed to do it they don't they do it in dogs a lot they don't do it in cats very often and he was able to get that done it did need to be done again because the problem is that when it's got a lot of swelling it's really hard to work out how much you need to take but he was fixed up and he went on to be great he was amazing and his owner was so happy because his eyes were finally fixed so in his lifetime he's had that he's had paralysis and now he's at 12 years old which is crazy he's probably got fip but there's probably an underlying cause as well so that cat is one of like I don't know, I like to I sort of say that they're a lemon cat. They're um, ones that came off the production line on a Friday afternoon when everybody wanted to go home early and didn't do such a good job. He hasn't had a lot of um, luck medically, but his owner did keep his insurance up. He's got the platinum insurance. His insurance company's had a lot of money over him over the years, but he's had a lot of money out of them too. So if you are watching, um, I would really uh, want you to know that this is going to be a big, if you're new to breeding, this is going to be a big thing for you going forward. If you're, if you're the kind of breeder that I am, um, if you're the kind of breeder that has compassion, that has empathy and, and is someone that sees the, this hobby as a whole, it's not just shows, it's not just cute kittens, it's not making money, um, but you see it as like a whole lifestyle, then you'll understand why I'm saying that Sometimes some of the things that happen that are really horrible are going to be the things that you're going to look back on and think, wow, that was amazing. And I think Carlisle's miracle that he had with the paralysis is probably one of those things that was a miracle for me. It was a wow moment and something that I'll always remember. I'm just hoping that he gets through this time. 
Um, yeah, so if you're new to breeding, that's that's hopefully the way that you're sort of thinking things will happen for you and the kind of personality you have and nurture your owners, get to know them, um, tell them that you'd love to have photos all the time. Every time someone comes to pick up a kitten from me and we walk them out to the car and they put the kitten in the car and they get all excited and I always say to them, it's pretty much at that point I say to them, um, please send me an update, let me know how they're going, let me know how they settle in and remember you can send me photos anytime you like. You could send me five photos of your cat every day and I will never say stop. It's never going to be too much. I'm the one person in your life that will never say no to cat photos. And I, I really do mean it. I really do mean it. I really get joy. Um, I really love seeing them. I love seeing my oldest ones. I love seeing people with them, you know, the older ones, the ones that they're absolutely devoted to. I really love seeing that. I love seeing them with the kids. I love seeing them with other pets. I love hearing stories about stupid things they do. Um, we have a cat that we, um, our friends had a son that had, oh, this is, sad I might cry um our, their son had neuroblastoma and he was on a journey that wasn't really going to have a good happy ending and um towards the end of that they lost their two rag dolls in you know reasonably close together and these cats were quite old I think the oldest one was 16 and um they had always loved our cats and they came out and they chose a kitten and they have this beautiful boy Sammy and Sammy was able to um give them a lot of you know, distraction and a lot of um, happiness at a time when things were getting really bad. And their son, unfortunately, did pass away. Um, and then Sammy stepped up and was there to try and, you know, ease the pain a little bit for them. And that's the kind of thing that I breed cats for. It's not about, you know, yesterday we went to a show and one of my cats, Bobby, he, he won, you know, best adult and he got big prize, big rosettes. That's great. I love it. I love that, but the stories like Carlisle and Sammy, um, they are the reason that I breed cats. Yeah, and I hope that that's going to become your reason too. So if you are new and you're not in my new Cat Breeders Club, you can find out information about that on my website at www.catbreedingforbeginners.com. Um, we go into a lot of detail about stuff. If you've got questions, I will help you there. Other people will help you there. Sometimes we talk about show stuff. Sometimes we talk about breeding issues. Sometimes we talk about ethical issues and philosophical things as well. And there is also now a new section in the Cat Breeders Club. So anyone that is watching this that is already in the club, just remember you've got the new section now. If you're using the apps on your devices, you will need to go back into the Apple Store or whatever the Android one is. <laughs> and, um, there's another app in there. It's just called the Kajabi app. You're currently using the Kajabi Communities app. There's another app called the Kajabi app. And in there, if you get that one and log in, you'll actually get into the new area that I've created, which has downloads. I've just put my kitten contract up there for you to have a look at. It's got videos. Once I get off this live, I'm going to upload a new video for my Q&A that I do every week. Um, lots more stuff in there. So we've got the community app for Chatty Chat and we've got the Kajabi app just for um, information stuff that you can still comment in there but that's just to keep it nice and neat and tidy because this thing was getting crazy. So if you're using a computer you just log in at my website and you'll have two options in your library. One will be the club and one will be the club hub. So the club is where I'm sharing stuff that you can download, you can watch, um, bits of information, um, things that I've, you know, there's a down, there's a um, links area for interesting things on the internet. All of that stuff is in the club and the chat is in the um, hub. So hopefully, if you have any problems with that, just message me, just message me here, message me here and now and I'll help you get it sorted because there's been a few people that haven't been able to get into both um, and we've got them sorted very quickly, I promise. Okay, well, I'm gonna go and put that video up now, but I'll give you an update about Carlisle. I'm really hoping it's going to be good news. Everybody that's watching, if you could just send him some positive thoughts. This is a very special cat. He's been through a lot in his life. Um, his owner's been through a lot in his life. And I would really hope for him to still have three cats from me, not two. So yeah, I'm really hoping that'll be a good outcome. So thanks guys, and I'll see you later, bye.